Welcome to Papa's Workshop. Today I want to do a real short video on fractions. Yeah, that's right. We're going to go back to math class and I'm going to talk about adding and subtracting fractions, how to be able to um, establish the numerator and denominator, see if you can look that up again from your school days, and how to be able to easily find the common denominator when you're adding them. So let's get started. Another day in the shop with Papa and Papa's Workshop. To support my channel, please go to patreon.com slash Papa's Workshop. And today we're going to be talking fractions, adding and subtracting all the different fractions. And it's really quite easy. Welcome to Papa's Workshop. Today I want to talk about fractions that you can use in your everyday life and in the construction field. Now today we're going to be just adding and subtracting the fractions. And I want to be able to show you really how the fractions break down into its pieces. Now the first thing I want to do is really define the different parts of a fraction. And there's really two parts, the numerator and the denominator. The numerator is actually how many parts have been taken from the whole and the denominator is how many total parts there are that make up the whole. Now let me give you an example. If I have a circle over here if I divide the circle in half, now I have two different parts. So if I look at that from the standpoint of a fraction, two is the total number of parts that I have. The numerator would be how many parts that I take from this. So if there's only two parts. So if I have one half, that would be one part taken from my total of two, then that would be that portion of the circle. Now one of the things that I'd like for you to do is be able to take a piece of paper and let's take that paper and let's fold it in half. So if I have my paper and I fold it in half, you can look at it this way, this being the entire whole piece of paper. And then when I take and divide it in half, now I have one half of the whole, and the whole has two pieces. This is one piece, and this would be the second piece. Now another way that you could write this fraction, if I have both halves, I could actually write this two over two, and that would be equal to one. One being the whole circle. So if the numerator is how many parts that are taken away from the denominator, then if this is the whole entire project and I take half of it away, then that would be one half. But if I have both halves, now I have one half here, one half here, that equals two halves or it equals the whole entire piece of paper or the one. So if I add one half plus one half, then this will equal two over two. So when you add the fractions now, one half plus one half, it's very simple. The denominator just comes down to the bottom and it goes into the denominator position. Now the only thing we have to do is add the numerator. So one half, which is this one, plus the one equals two. Okay, so now we have two over two, and as we showed earlier, that equals the one. Fractions don't get a lot more complicated than this, but we're gonna do a number of examples. So I'm gonna clear the board now, and we're gonna divide this circle into four parts. So if I have the circle, divided now into four different parts, the denominator is going to be four. Why is that so important? Because that tells me how many total parts that there are. So if I take my piece of paper again and divide it into fours,
the same thing will apply. I have four equal parts to this whole entire page. Likewise, I have four equal parts to this whole entire circle. And the reason I'm using a piece of paper is so that later on, after you watch this video, if you take the paper and make the same example that I make, you'll have this information that you'll be able to refer back to. So now then, if we look at this, if I have one quarter, that would be one quarter. If I take another quarter, then that becomes two quarters. So now we have a circle divided into four different parts. So as far as the denominator, there's four parts to this whole entire circle. So if I take and have one quarter, and if I add another quarter to it, That's going to equal two quarters. Let's take one more. So if you remember from the last example, the denominator stays the same. So now what do we do? All we need to do is add one plus one plus one, and that is three. So you have three quarters. One quarter, two quarters, and three quarters. Pretty easy. So now how many pieces do we have? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the denominator is going to be 8. So now we have to decide how many parts that we have. I'm going to draw another circle. And I'm going to divide it into 8's also. And I'm going to take 1, 2, 3 8's. And I'm going to add together 1 8th. To be able to add that, that's going to be, the eight's going to stay on the bottom. Three plus one, and that is four eighths. Four eighths is the same as a half. How do I know that? Okay, well, one of the things that we can do, and we're going to cover this in another video, but you're going to reduce the fraction down to the lowest terms. So whatever I do to the top, I need to do to the bottom. So if I have four eighths, 4 goes into the 4 one time, 4 goes into 8 two times, and that's where my 1 half comes from. Now if I want to be able to reduce this down, because that is 4 eighths, because that's my 3 eighths and that's 4 eighths, Now, to be able to prove this, I have the whole entire circle here. And if I've taken three eighths, one, two, three, and I add that one eighth to it, that equals my four eighths. So that proves to you that that is correct. It's also one half. And if I take the one half, How do I get that one half? Well, I can divide the four by itself, which is four. So four divided by four equals one. Then I have to do the same thing down here. So four divided by the eight, and that is gonna be two. So that will give you the one half. And you can see again, that is correct. So that's how easy it is to be able to add the fractions. And likewise, to be able to subtract fractions, it's just as easy. 
So in this sample, we're back to the quarters. So we know we're going to have the quarters at the bottom, which is the denominator. So now we're going to take, let's say, the whole entire thing, so four fourths, and we're going to subtract one quarter. And that is going to be what is left. So if that is taken away, I now have one, two, three. I have three quarters remaining. Okay, when you're subtracting fractions or adding fractions, the denominator stays the same. So then we have four minus the one, and that equals three. And you can show that again, the proof of it. That's just how easy the fractions are. Now that works really good when the denominator are the same. What happens if your denominator is not the same? So let's take one third and let's add three quarters. How are we gonna do that? We need to be able to get the denominators the same. And to be able to do that, we need to find the lowest common denominator between these two. The easiest way to do that is to be able to, again, you're going to do the same thing to each side. Now, to be able to get the common denominator, the easiest way is to be able to take this number, 3. So 3 times 4 is 12. And we're going to do the same thing to this one. 3 times 3 is 9. And then we're going to take this one. So 4 times the 3 is 12. And 4 times the 1 is 4. Four. Now we can add those together, as now we have a common denominator. So 9 plus 4 is 13 twelfths. Now 13 twelfths is a little bit more than a whole because there's 12 parts in that circle for the whole, so there's one extra one. So we take this. 1 and 1 twelfth would be the final answer. So fractions are not complicated. Adding and subtracting fractions are very easy, very straightforward, and something that I hope that you can practice at home. And the one thing that I want you to remember today is that the parts of the fraction, there's really only two parts. A numerator, which is on top of the fraction, and the denominator. The numerator is the number of parts that's taken away from the whole. And then the denominator has the total number of parts that make up that whole circle or the piece of paper that you have in your hand. 